Hi, today I'm going to show you how to look up vendor information for a network card using the MAC address. So what exactly is a MAC address? Um, a MAC address is the hardware description of your network card. It's what layer 2 communication happens with um, between two network cards or two network nodes. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to go into ipconfig and or rather a command prompt. I'm going to type ipconfig slash all to get the MAC address. And what we see here is a 48-bit um, MAC address. Uh, I'm going to highlight that here in a minute. Uh, the first three bytes or first six nibbles or four bits of char of um, characters is what we call the OID and that OID is uh, given to a manufacturer of a network card uh, from the IEEE. The last six or rather last three bytes of um, of the MAC address a manufacturer makes unique themselves. So this way um, all of the network cards uh, for this card and in Intel Pro we know are totally unique and Intel again was uh, the one who came up with the last three bytes of data of the MAC address. So if we want to look up a network card all we have to do is look up the first three bytes or the first six characters of the MAC address and we can find out the vendor that the IEEE allocated uh, that block of the last three bytes to. So I'm just going to type in ARPG, I'm going to see who's communicating to my computer here. And this is one way that we'd use a MAC vendor lookup. Uh, we will copy out the MAC address. I just copied that into my clipboard. And rather than going to the IEEE and downloading their whole database, a friend of mine actually put this web website together. It's called MAC Vendor Lookup. Uh, so it's www.macvendorlookup.com and he actually nightly uh, downloads the IEEE database and imports it into his database and he has some really unique features let's see if I can go there there we go and first first page you can do a quick lookup now I pasted so it didn't quite go in so I'll go into the uh, Mac vendor list lookup and I'll click look up and we'll see that uh, this Mac address has been associated or given to VMware and VMware uses the first three bytes in all of their VMs that 005056 as well as a couple others so one other thing that we can do here is we can actually paste if we had a whole list of Mac addresses we can paste a whole list of MAC addresses and again knowing that the last three bytes don't really matter um, I'm just gonna make them unique and if I say look up you'll see that they're all associated with VMware so another feature is we can randomly generate MAC addresses uh, don't know how useful this is but it, there might be a use case and we can generate them in various formats. We could specify the beginning OID and if we say generate we have a nice random uh, list of I think it's 50 by default MAC addresses. So I'm gonna go to browse and if we browse we can actually browse the records of the IEEE. Again this is not the IEEE site uh, my buddy had put this site together and he downloads that from the IEEE. We can type in a, a MAC address here and it will look up uh, this one no vendor was associated with. I'll try another no vendor. Um, okay well let's take a look at the power of this website. So the power of this website is the API that uh, he exposes so I'm just going to type in an email address just to uh, to register and of course I have to select the format I could select a number of formats but I'm going to use XML 
And this is kind of the output of XML. And I'll say generate the key. And what we get is a, um, a, an API key. Uh, if I copy that out and I paste that into a web browser, uh, doesn't look like much, but we got back some information. The true beauty to this is that the browser is just displaying the text, but what it actually spit back was XML code. So when I seen this, I was like, wow, um, I, I remember working on uh, an XML VB script, and I was wondering how could I actually use this uh, with my VB script. So these VB scripts can be downloaded from bohack.com and uh, I have links down below this video. But what I did was I changed the URL, I changed the XML tag to company, that's the XML tag I want to extract, and I put in my API key and you can actually substitute that MAC address there uh, for an argument, you can get a little more sophisticated. Uh, I create, oops, I create the Microsoft XML um, object to actually grab the XML and I say okay load the URL and it loads XML doc with the pertinent information that I'm looking for uh, from the URL then I set a uh, collection from the XML doc looking for the the tag and then I do a for each through the collection and I look for the actual value that I'm trying to get and it spits it out so basically echoes it right there and then of course uh, I destroy the objects at the end that's the set XML call and XML doc to nothing Uh, and this shows you the count of how many elements were actually found. So let's go ahead and run this. And oops. My keys are sticking. Okay. So I open up a command prompt, and the first thing I want to do is. I'm going to just set the default to C script, which is a uh, console script. If you double clicked on that VBS script, it would actually pop up a box. Uh, so I just set it to C script. So if I do, it's just going to basically open up a command prompt just like that and disappear. And then I'll open up another command prompt and say C script and the VB file. And you'll notice here that I get back uh, the company that I'm looking for and it looks like the script did its job. Now you can of course uh, manipulate this script and do other things but this is just some basic code. And again my one recommendation is that you put an argument value in and you feed it the MAC address. Okay, now this is another one. This will actually save out um, the XML. So I'm saying here, uh, create a whoops, create a variable called shtml and get HTML in that URL. I'm going to create a file system object, and that's the file name it's going to save as, and it's going to pull that UR, UR, URL. So I'm calling this function get HTML, and that's further down below. There it is. And I'm passing it that URL. So that function, what it's going to do is it's basically going to create a an XML HTTP object. and use that right there and it's going to set or create the object for some reason my keys are not working today 
and then I'm going to open up the address, do a get on it, send the information for the URL, and I'm going to get a response back, and I'm actually going to load the variable of the function so that it just returns something, you know, get HTML right there. And then, of course, I'm going to destroy the object and end the function. So it's a pretty simple VB script. And that is how I get SHTML or save the HTML variable. And then down here, I am going to, there's that control key again, uh, I am going to change it from Unicode to ASCII and then write it out and of course close the file. And then, of course, we always want to destroy our um, objects that we create. That's just good programming. And that Unicode to ASCII, uh, that's so it's viewable. Text files don't like Unicode. So there's a little function I found. And, of course, good coding. We destroy all variables or all objects. So let's go ahead and run this code this will basically save out an XML file okay and if I do a C script and there is our HTML code so again if I double click on it, it doesn't look like much but if I view the source, or view what's in that, now we'll just open up a notepad and just drag it in the notepad. We have some beautiful XML, and it shows me that that is actually a Dell uh, OID. So you can actually use these little scripts for a lot of different things. They don't have to just be for Mac vendor lookup. I kind of wanted to showcase two of uh, the scripts that I'd worked on. Again, uh, both of these scripts are uh, on bowhack.com, and the, uh, the URLs are below. And, of course, if you don't want to use them, you can use macvendorlookup.com, and it'll allow you to actually look up a, uh, um, a vendor ID from a MAC address. So really unique site. Um, they've been around for a while, but he has the added functionality of the API and uh, random generation and, of course, MAC list lookup. So thanks for watching. And as always, please subscribe to my videos. Thank you.